Monday is over, the car is here, I took some parts off, but I didn't do so much today. It was not a really good day, I've just been cleaning some clothes, did some office work, took some parts off, been sleeping. Um, so I hope for a much more prog progressive day tomorrow actually. It's Tuesday <coughs> and it's cleaning time. And when I'm done cleaning, we're gonna take out the engine and the gearbox. The progress is on. Here we have my four dampers. This is the rear, this is the front. I'm gonna send them to Bilsen now because as you can see, this one is totally bended like a banana. So all four I'm gonna to send to Bilstein here in Germany today to rebuild and check and adjustment. And this I actually wanted to do before spa, but it was no time. But now we have time because now it's like three and a half weeks till Budapest, so now we're gonna make it great for Budapest. Alex, you are at work. <laughs> I was here. <laughs> You're watching oh, Porsche. Stress here. <laughs> Peter, I can see you have a new bird here. What's with this Vogel though? Pingu. <laughs> Peter is really not happy with me because I used his computer a few weeks ago and after I used it it changed to Norwegian and everything and I don't know how I get it back. Oh this gone, exactly. Then it's the engine out. Now I'm gonna take the gearbox off the engine. Here we have the gearbox, it's off. Here we have the clutch, this we're gonna take off and check now. I have now been mounting this support to the gearbox. And that's because this support fits in this frame, so now I can spin it around and put it where I want to have it when I'm gonna work on it. Inside here is the differential. This is the one we had out at the weekend at Spa and checked it and changed it. The first thing to do now before I start opening it is to clean it properly. After cleaning now, it's really important to get rid of all the water, especially in the connectors and stuff. Here we have the trailer repainted. With new stickers and everything. Rims is painted too. Now it looks really nice, or? Huh? I'm now here back at my shed in Torvesten. I'm gonna pick up some parts and have some cakes for Tim. Let's see if we can find Tim. Hello, Tim. <laughs> Hi. Finish. Ah, vielen Dank. Finish. 100%. Alles gut. Also, ja, klar. Was ist jetzt? Komm rein. Noch gar mal eine Rechnung für dich, bitte. <laughs> Super mit Wasser. Schmeckt noch nicht. Here we have the inside of my gearbox. Pretty cool, or? And here we have one axle I already took out. Inside this box we have these rings. This is dog rings. This is normally the first thing will get, uh, how to say, not broken, but you can see they are good used. But on this gearbox it looks new on all the sides. So I don't think I actually have to change anything inside here. Because it's not like I had a problem or something, it's just that now is the time, this was says in the books, that it's time to look at it. And everything looks just perfect, but I will wait till Franz is coming, he's not here today. Franz Conor had a boss here, he's a gearbox expert, so he's coming back this night here in Newbring today testing. Then he's also going to take a look for me and see how it's looking. But he also said that it looks good. It's time to fix my front bumper. As you can see, it's a small hole here. Also here is it cracked, and here is it. Ow! Cracked. Down there is it also broken. It's fucking broken everywhere. So as you can see, I now mounted the bumper to the splitter and I'm gonna sand everything down and the reason why I mount the bumper to the splitter is that then they ha then it have the shape if I put only the bumper here on the stative then it's gonna be out of shape and it's maybe not gonna fit when I when I made this back together and I've been sanding a little bit and as you can see everything is just a mess here everything is just broken it's a big holder and now is it like two pieces here and this one is totally everywhere you can see so I went to my workshop down the corner here and I took something down from the wall. This one, this is from last year. And this one is broken on that side. So now I'm gonna cut over here and mount this piece on this bumper. It's possible to fix it, but to do this is gonna be much more easy. So here we go. Now we're gonna cut it here perfectly and then I'm gonna start uh, put it together with carbon fiber. Now I fit both together perfectly and I glue it together with this really good glue. Now I'm gonna put two two thin layer of carbon fiber over here and when this is dry tomorrow then we're going to sand it on the other side and we're going to put a wide layer of carbon fiber totally on the back side two layers there so then it's going to be super strong the carbon fiber is on and now I also upholstered it in with this uh, this tape this is because I want to keep it compact over the night when it's going to dry now now I'm going to learn you guys one thing which is really important when you make carbon fiber and epoxy, when you mix epoxy, remember to always take the rest what you didn't use outside or put water in it. This I had left now, and look at it, it's cooking. It's so hot, it's smoking. It's really dangerous actually. It can go on fire. 
So it's a new day and now we're gonna take off this and see how the result is. I'm always excited to see how the carbon turned out. Here we have the result and it's actually really nice. I also managed to put the carbon around this edge here, so it's really good. Perfecto. Now we're gonna sand down or I'm gonna sand down wider piece on the back here and put carbon here too, then it's gonna be strong like a glacier. Here is my carbon fiber. I have now sanded this down, I put some tape here on the edges, also in this hole. I cut the pieces I need, also with the field play. Now we're gonna put the carbon on there. Eh, poxy. And now the whole hide there. Carbon is coming on. Now I put the carbon and then on the top of the carbon I put this one with name field play. It's gonna make it more compact and when everything is dry you just take off the field play. I'm gonna show you tomorrow and then the result looks really nice. I'm done! And this is now early morning, so tonight it's going to be dry and we're going to take off and see how the result is. I am now driven to buy salad. <laughs> Here we have the big Thank boss. Servus, we get you again. Super. That's the big boss. Franz is here today and he was here now looking at my gearbox. He said the same as me and I tried Salesport and my friend Alfeng in Norway. It looks like new, so we're just going to put uh, everything back inside and leave it like it is. But before I do this now, I'm gonna load my jumpy with some stuff I'm gonna bring to Norway because tomorrow morning I drive back home. Gearbox is now coming together. Pretty cool, or? Look at this. Now I'm checking how many newton meters on the bolts for the gearbox. It should be 25 newton meters, and we have to use Loctite, the blue one. Blue cup box here, they have both green and blue. We bring both. Loctite. The old Loctite is now away. And I put new Loctite on the bolt. For you who don't know what Loctite is, when this is drying, it's like a glue will keep the bolt uh, stuck there, so it's not coming out so easy. Now I just tighten all the bolts just a little bit manual. Then we're gonna use the moment closer. A moment tool is like uh, I can adjust it here, how much uh, pressure I need to have, and when I do it, then it clicks when it's on the right pressure. This is a great tool. That's used especially on places like this because this is an aluminum housing. So the, um, the gewinde, how to say it, where the bolt is screwing down, screwed, mounted down, it's uh, not so solid sometimes. So if you do it too hard, you can destroy the, the gewinde. I don't know how to was this in English. I have now made it 26 newton meters because this one, this long uh, flanger on there, is making it weaker. You hear it, then it clicks. There we go. I don't get help from Stalwil anymore, I did it before, so this is not like uh, to tell some jokes, but Stalwil have the best uh, moment uh, tools in the world, that's not a joke, they are, they are fantastic actually. I have now assembled everything around the box and it's ready to go back into the car. But it's not going back straight ahead, I have to check the clutch, I think I need a new one, so now I'm gonna do something else actually. But first I'm gonna put my tools back in my box. That's important, I clean everything now, that's important also. Now I'm gonna go and uh, help Franz with something actually. I think actually I'm done here now for this time because tomorrow morning I drive back home and now I have some to do, something to do for Franz. And what I'm gonna do now is paint the front of this scooter in green. So now I have to take these three pieces off and it's one more scooter over there somewhere inside there. So it's two of them. Okay, let's find out how this is built together. Okay, the three pieces we're gonna paint this off. Only the front there, because this blue we're gonna leave as it is. Hey, my front bumper is drying out from this morning. Now we're gonna take off this field plate. As you can see, it's coming off pretty, pretty easy. All right. As you can see here now, it's smooth and really nice. And when you do this, you do like it used now, you use tape in the edges, use this chrome folder. Because this one, it's not. It's really easy to take off the afterward, and it's not. Uh, it's not sticking to the epoxy. So, hey, here we go. Now is it solid again? Great, Stian. Well done. Parts are ready, sanded, and now I'm gonna mix some color and paint them. Here we have the color, and like always, these have to be really accurate with head there, like two to one. That's around there, I think. And we take a snaps of turbo. Then we're sure it's drying quickly. Let me mix it. Now I'm just gonna blow the parts one last time and drag over with this one, take away the last dust and then we're gonna paint the color. The 
first liar is on. Now I'm gonna dry for a few minutes and we put the second one. Dry and ready for the second liar. Yes, it is. Now the part's gonna dry for like a half an hour and I think it's dry enough to mount it then because I had a lot of this turbo inside. So normally it should be dry enough after half an hour. This one I forgot to take off. To repair this one also. I just booked flights for my boys to the next race at Budapest. Flights and rental car. It's really nice to be done with that actually because that's that's some of the jobs I don't like. France just helped me with the clutch and he said it's really nice too, so we're gonna put it back inside. France showed me he got few clutches in stock here, old one, used ones, damaged ones. I'm really happy I have France here and I can ask him about stuff with clutch, gearbox and these kind of things because France are like yeah 40 45 years with experience with this kind of stuff so that's uh that's really good for me just to tell a little bit about france the car there underneath the cover france built himself it's a sports wagon he used in the 90s he's had a v12 lamborghini engine formula one engine and it's just an amazing car actually back in the warehouse there is uh some books book i can show you a picture of it because that's that's an amazing car and he built him himself eh? Here they are. Here's a bunch of books actually. Look at this. World Sport Car Racing 90s. Look who's on the front page. Conor himself. The car from France is inside here somewhere. Here we have a bunch of the car. Hey look, Hydro Aluminium. That was Harald Hoisman was racing that car. <laughs> yeah, this car on the first page is a Porsche 962C. So that's not the car in underneath the cover there. Hey look at this picture. It's Spa, Franco Champs. This is Rouge. Looks totally different back in the days. <laughs> Here we have the Playboy <laughs> France Conrad. Right? Here we have another Playboy, eh? Hoyer Hoisman with a suitcase full of money. <laughs> I think it was a prank he told me earlier on. You know what? I have to disappoint you guys. I thought it was a picture of this car in this book, but it's not. But you see the level, eh? He first built a car and competed against these guys. It's unbelievable. I'm closing up now. I mount the scooters tomorrow morning before I go home. It's better when the paint is completely dry. It's Saturday morning and I'm just gonna mount the scooter parts now. And then I'm going back home to Norway. I hope it's dry now. Yeah, now is it completely dry. And the result, I think it's, uh, I think I was lucky because this is actually really good. Here they are, ready. Looks good now, eh? Now they have the Conrad colors. All right, time to leave this place. And drive back to Norway. This time I'm driving all the way because I have to go to Denmark to pick up a machine for my father. It's now 9:23. Let's see how long time I use home. Oh la la. <laughs> I have now arrived here in uh, Puttgarden, this is Germany, and now I'm gonna take a ferry to Denmark. This is around 50 minutes ferry, so it's not too long. But it's a lot of traffic here today. And hopefully I can join the ferry which is leaving now soon. If not, I have to wait on half an hour for the next one. I had to wait for the second one now, but this is the second one, so finally we are entering. It's always so crowded at these ferries in summertime. I see now, I think I have some luck. I was the last one to enter the ferry. I'm in Denmark, now I go to my friend Mark and pick up the machine for my father and there I only have one and a half hour. <laughs> so, I'm finally here in uh, Ballerup in Denmark. I'm here with my friend Mark, he's an old friend. Here we have Mark, how are you doing mate? <laughs> Mark was also earlier my mechanic, why are you not my mechanic anymore? Now I changed the school, that's great. But this year maybe I have time to come back to the races, or? Maybe. Maybe, yeah I hope so. Very good mechanic. Slow but good. <laughs> so this is the one I'm gonna bring. It's only one problem now. <laughs> Car is full already. You think we're gonna manage to fit it, Mark? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no chance. Yeah, we're gonna manage. How is the Mazda, Mark? Good, as it's, always. It's a really nice car, eh? Yes, it's the best. <laughs> what? It's the best, yeah? The best. <laughs> All right, here it comes inside now I'm just gonna try to fit the rest I don't know why we made stress about this it's plenty space the guys over there in that garage saw my racing tires in the back and was coming over to speak to me 
and they had a lot of really nice cars in there. Been restoring some Porsche themselves, and they made the interior there, and they made it beautiful. The interior. So I got this car now, and I have a contact now in case I need to make interior or something. I have a really nice contact here. That's really good. I'm leaving. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks a lot. See you, time. See you next time, Lennar. Yeah. Take care, Solo. I am now in Helsingør. Now I'm gonna take this ferry. What you see there, over to Sweden, is over there. This ferry takes only 20 minutes. And in Sweden, I think I have only like four and a half hours to my home. <laughs> I am back home. I was home just before 12 o'clock in the evening. It's now a little bit more than half past 12. That's because I packed up my bag. I took some eggs. I cooked some eggs, took a little bit to eat. Same time I eat them, I booked a flight ticket for my brother to Budapest because that I didn't do the other day. But now I got flight tickets for everyone, so now I'm gonna go and sleep. This video vlog is finished and I say like always, please subscribe to my channel, put the thumbs up and tell me, put a comment, tell me what you think. And yeah, so long. One new one is coming soon.